Hey guys, I'm Simone, aka Nairo. I'm here with my Native Instrument Complete Control S61 NK2, which I reviewed last week. Today, we're gonna check out a little more on what the browsing function of the Complete Control software has to offer using these two amazing screens of the Complete Control NK2. Before even starting with your plugin search, I have to make a few premises. One, what we're doing here works both using Complete Control as a VSD in every digital audio workstation, using a machine, or using it as a standalone application, as I'm doing right now. Two, few functions that we see in this video can be altered using the shift button on the top left side of your Complete Control keyboard. I'll be sure to tell you when to use it. Three, as I said in the walkthrough review video, only your NKES compatible plugins will be listed here. To know more about NKES, click on the link in the description below. Last but not least is that I use the word filter to specify which filter layer we are talking about. You'll understand more about this point later during the video. To enter browser mode, you have to press the browser button on the right of the screen. Here's how this view works. You have to think of the browser as something that starts big here on the left side of the screens and becomes smaller and more manageable here, where you can currently see all your plugin presets. The Complete Control plugin already did something for us. It searched through all the NKES plugins and extracted all the presets, combining them into one location. This way, we learn that if you want to play a piano, or to be more specific, a grand dark piano, you won't need to free up your schedule for the next week. On the left screen, you have all your plugins and plugin expansions. And on the right screen, you have your presets or result list. If you exactly know that you're looking for a specific plugin, you can use the first three rotaries here to search through plugin manufacturers, plugins, and banks or expansions. As you can see, the plugin manufacturer from which I can choose from are Native Instruments and Waves. After maybe selecting Native Instruments, I may want to go through all the plugins that Native Instrument gave to me with this Complete 10 Ultimate. As you can see, the first and second rotaries are already there as you open the browser, but not the third one. This is because not every plugin has banks expansions, so they appear only if needed. Like in this example, where I can select from Abbey Road Black Kit Full or Abbey Road Chrome Kit Full. Apart from using the second rotary, you can also use the left right arrows on the left side of the screens to move between your plugin pages. After finding the plugin that you were looking for, you can use two different ways to move between the plugin presets and to load them. If you want to stay close to the screen area, you can use rotary number 8 to scroll through the presets. <laughs> listening to the sound preview and load them using the bottom number 8. Going back to browser view, another way is to use the big rotary right here. And pressing it to select the presets. An interesting thing that you have to know is that you can use the second or third filter even if you haven't used the first one, as I did right now. This means that you don't have to select native instrument if you want to use a native instrument product but you may need some more time to go through your plugins because you may have some plugins from other manufacturers too. Pressing shift and pressing the buttons number one or two, you can change how rotary number one works, going from the vendors filter to the categories filter. Now we can divide our plugins, not from the vendor, but between drums and percussion, sampled instruments, or synthesizers. Next, there's a search button right here. This gets you back to the last plugin preset you loaded if you got lost during your search. The user button opens up a section in which you can find the plugins and presets that you have saved in your user section. 
This has to be done manually from the complete control app preferences, and so won't be explained too much here. On the right side, there's three filters that can be applied using rotaries 5, 6, and 7. While, as we saw already, the last rotary is used to move through the presets resulting from your current search. The three filters are types, subtypes, and character. Using the fifth and sixth rotaries, you can browse from preset file based on type and subtype text. Types is used to select what type of instrument you are looking for. You may be looking for a bass, drums, organ, and all the others listed here. After selecting the type, the subtype filter appears. So this works like the bank expansion that we saw before. And this means that the subtype filter appears only if the type filter has already been used. This filter is pretty useful because many instruments like organs can be subcategorized into more specific type of organs like accordion or electric or pipe. Then we have character and this is a tag that I usually explain as a less specific tag. I'm saying this because this filter, as the name says, defines which character the sound has but a character might not exclude another one. In other words, I may be looking for an analog, but also tempo-synced organ. And unfortunately, you can't do it. You have to select one character at a time. If you don't know what instruments you want to use for your next song, you can get inspired just by using the character filter, as this may be selected even without using the type and subtype filters. Maybe selecting analog, you could see what comes up. Talking about the last four buttons up here, we already know that button number 8 is used to load presets. Button 7 displays your favorites. And this can be added on top of everything else. So you may be looking through bases and you remember that you have a favorite one. You just press here and it shows here. How can I add a favorite? This is pretty simple. You just have to remove favorite, go through your sounds, and then pressing Shift plus button number 7 adds these presets as a favorite. So now while looking through bass and pressing favorites, these presets will appear here every time that I open up complete control. As you saw, while I was adding this preset as a favorite, keeping shift pressed lets you use button number eight to turn on and off the pre here feature. So now you are not listening to the preview of them. If you want to turn it back on, just press shift plus button number eight. As explained in the walkthrough review of this native instrument's complete control S61 NK2, after loading a preset in plugin mode, you see the thumbnail of the plugin and a plus symbol. This can be used to add processor and effects and can be done using button number six. This way, you move the complete control focus on the next empty space in your, let's call it, virtual complete control rack. This can be used to add processor and effects and can obviously be done both in plugin view and in browser view, pressing button number six. Let's go back to browser view to browse between all our effects and processors. This works exactly the same way as browsing between plugins. So you have your vendors here, all your products here, all the types, all the subtypes, all the characters and the results. After, let's say, loading a CLA76, I can add another effect, pressing 6 again, or use button number 5 to move back to reactor. Let's add a reverb. Let's go for a plate. <laughs> And that's it! 
Here's everything you need to know about the browser mode using a complete control keyboard NK2 or complete control as a plugin. If you want to know more about the complete control S61 NK2 keyboard or about the complete control NK2 series in general, take a look at the review that I did last week. Thank you guys for watching, I'm Simone aka Nairo and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!